gentlemen, uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'd ask uh, you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to ask uh, Councilman Knapp to lead us in the pledge, and Councilman Curran, you'll lead us in prayer. Well, Councilman Knapp, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Curran. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and disposed to do your will. Bless us with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Endow with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice, peace, and that through obedience to thy law we may show thy praise among nations. Fill our hearts with thankfulness, suffer not our trust in you to fail, and look lovingly on our servicemen and women, that they may return home in peace. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, Councilman. Will the clerk please call the roll? <laughs> McMahon. Present. Negershev. Present. Johnson. Present. Trombetta. Present. Calodrino. Perkins. Present. Visconti. Present. Chinese. Present. Esposito. Present. Saudi. Present. Cabo. Present. Botello. Diggs. Tysholtz. Present. Arcanti. Present. Curran. Here. Knapp. Present. Levy. Present. Riley. Seabury. Here. Stanley. Being 20 present and not absent. <laughs> Please let the record reflect that Mr. Riley is out on uh, medical issues. Uh, before we begin the public speaking portion of the uh, night, uh, we have some special awards that we, we want to hand out in the interest of not tying up some of our uh, value, valuable time of our city employees. I, I'd like to indulge the council to be able to present these now, but these are awards that are presented to uh, uh, each of the individuals who have served the city uh, for a variety of years. Uh, it's a new program designed by the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities in conjunction with the City of Danbury. Um, we did identify a few more folks that will be, be uh, forwarding to CCM also for certificates for their work. Uh, so I'm going to uh, call these individuals up, ask them to accept the award, and thank them for their service uh, to our city. Uh, of course, first and foremost is the uh, longest serving councilman in the history of our city. And that would be uh, Mr. John Esposito with 25 years on the town council. We'd also like to recognize um, an individual who has 40 years with the city of Danbury. I don't know if he's the longest serving employee, but I think he is. And that's everybody's favorite lieutenant, Jimmy King. Jim? have a, an award for uh, our favorite, one of our favorite, my all-time favorite engineers, except for Fareed and Antonio. I don't, I don't want to get them upset. Uh, I don't know if she's here tonight. Yeah. She's here? Oh, there she is. Uh, uh, Pat and I struck up a friendship when I first took office, and uh, she, even to this day, is here to provide support and kibitz and help in all these wonderful city projects we have going. So, Pat Ellsworth with uh, 35 years wow. with this. We 
also like to recognize uh, our favorite uh, sergeant, uh, Bob Guerrera, who's been with us for 30 years. Uh, also was very instrumental in working closely with PAL and working with children over these last many years. I don't know if Bob is here. I didn't see him coming in, but if, is he here, Chief? If not, let's give him a round of applause. I was looking at this today. I wasn't sure if my father had appointed this individual to serve the city, but um, he does a great job for us, chairman of our uh, zoning board of appeals, everybody's friend, somebody who has led with uh, knowledge, integrity, and a fairness and sense of fairness towards all the residents, and that's Dick Jowdy for 30 years. I'm not trying to uh, date Dick or anything, but my father, when he was mayor, appointed him into the position he's in. So um, We also have a certificate for uh, Lieutenant Charles Klug. Charlie's been with us for 30 years, and the police department has been doing an outstanding job, and we appreciate him keeping all our records squared away and straight. So Charlie, come on up here. Out today, right? Um, we also like to recognize our captain of our detective division. No crime too big or too small to solve. In addition, uh, this individual has served as acting chief uh, in times of transition. He does an outstanding job. He's a good friend of mine, and I'm proud to know him. I'm proud to have him affiliated with our Danbury Police Department, Captain Mitch Westman. Captain. <laughs> some individuals with 25 years of uh, experience here. Um, this individual works in the town clerk's office and she, uh, I remember her when she was driving for Mayor Dyer um, as his security person, uh, but she's a good friend and I have to tell you her family has served the city in a variety of capacities in different ways over the last many years. Uh, she cares about Danbury each and every day. She does a great job in the town clerk's office. Proud to call her my friend. Pam Evanuska, 25 years. <laughs> Next uh, 25 year employee um, is an individual who really needs no introduction, um, but every time I see him, I always say, uh, Jimmy, get us some money, will you? And he never really tells me what he's working on because he's a detective, so he detects. But he says, uh, I'm working on it. I got something coming. Don't worry. We're going to be good. And that is uh, uh, Detective Jim Fisher, who, by the way, has been responsible through the asset forfeiture program of probably topping well over several million dollars of uh, seizures he's done over the years. All that money comes back to the department for equipment and the things that we need. So Jim Fisher, come down and receive this. Report. Um, Captain Weston and uh, Lieutenant Fisher couldn't do it alone without his staff uh, in the Detective Bureau and the Special Investigations Division. And so I want to congratulate, thank personally for his hard work on behalf of the citizens of this community. Uh, that's Dan Trombetta for 25 years working for the city.
You'll never see these guys again. They'll go back undercover and we read about them. So congratulations to all of them. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to move to the public speaking portion of our meeting. The thir first 30 minutes of each Common Council meeting are reserved for public speaking. Um, I would ask that any member of the public that wishes to address the council must do so about an item on the agenda and must be a resident and or taxpayer of the city of Danbury. So with that, is there anybody who wishes to address the Common Council this evening? Mr. Silva? My name is Jean De Silva. I live at 174 Franklin Street Extension. I'm a member of the Richter Park Authority, serving as the liaison from the Richter Arts Association. And I am here to speak in reference to items three and 21. Three, regarding the filling of vacancies on the Richter Authority Board, I offer no suggestions other than to say that appointments should be general geared to the arts as well as golf. In regard to item 21, the length of the term of the Stanley Lasker Richter Park Authority, it would seem to me that the five-year option makes more sense because much time is needed to go through the process of establishing priorities, continuity, and work schedules to make the house and grounds suitable for maximum and varied use as the golf course is. 80 acres of Richter Park was donated by the Richter family to serve all citizens of Danbury for recreational purposes. Right now, the park offers arts activities, musicals, hiking trails, golf, and tennis. As you know, golf is the main activity. In a letter dated May 18, 1969, Mr. Martin Gose, chairman of the Conservation Commission, writes Irene Myers Richter, of the progress being made at Richter Park. He writes that the work of artists will be quartered at the house. He tells her of plans to form an arts association. He asks her if the gallery, which he hopes to establish there, could be named after her. The arts was considered an important part of the park from the beginning. The Richter House provides an intimate setting in which artists can perform and show their works. The audience has an opportunity to meet the artists and share ideas. Danbury has far too few venues of this type. It needs more, it needs more. Renting space from the schools in Westcon is too expensive for most artists. The Richter Park Authority was given the responsibility to maintain the park, quote, to construct and reconstruct park facilities as authorized by law only within said park, unquote. When the park first began, the house was cared for as part of the charge given to the authority. But in the last 20 years or so, the house has been sorely neglected to the point where it has deteriorated badly. I spoke with Mrs. Laganza, Mrs. Richter's granddaughter, a year ago. She stated that Mrs. Richter would want the house to remain a center for the arts as it had been when she and her husband lived there. In December of 2006, the roof of the house was inspected and it was found to be in need of replacement. The roof has not yet been repaired, and you know what happens to a building with a bad roof. It is believed that the roof repair will be in the next city budget. Whoa. Other important improvements. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> other important improvements at the house are needed. Little effort has been made in making these improvements. The authority says it doesn't have the money, and yet, when the golf course needs work, money is found. There was currently a bond for $410,000 for golf course improvements. None of it is for the house. The Danbury State Legislative Delegation has supported a bond request for $300,000 to renovate the house. Half to be used in 2008-2009 and half in 2009 and 2010. Many people are urging Governor Rell to release the funds. So far, she has not done so. The city must take leadership in an effort to restore the house and the grounds surrounding it. The Richter family enriched our community with their ongoing gift. Their home is a monument to their memory. We must work to preserve it as an important part of our cultural heritage. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Silva? Yes. Said, no, I said thank you. Oh. Thank you. Does anybody else who wish to address the council this evening? Uh, Mrs. Basso, Mr. Sananian, and Mr. Cochran.
Colleen Basso, 8 Hoyt Street, Danbury, Connecticut. The first one I'd like to speak on is number 20, selling property on Rockwood Lane. I really wish the city would look into this further. I think there's an awful lot of unanswered questions, and I think these should be answered before we sell any of our city property. I was also going to talk on 21, and I do agree with the lady before me who spoke. I think she spoke eloquently on it, and I think this is something we have to preserve. I know this is not what we're doing tonight. Um, I would have liked to have seen the government entities down to two years rather than five years so that if there's a problem, they can come back to us every two years or even in two years and say, hey, look, we've got a problem. I remember being on the council not too many years ago, and we did loan the uh, golf course quite a bit of money, um, interest-free, which we always do, but that is our entity, and they did pay us back, but that was for the golf course. The other one I like to say is on number 22. Thank you for doing something about parking on the lawns. It's something that should have been done 10 years ago before it got out of hand. Thank you, and a very happy birthday to my friend, Louise McMahon. Ms. Basso, Chad, you're up. I can't stand up out of this chair, it's too low. Okay, we'll bring the microphone to you. We aim to please. Hi, my name is uh, Chad Sinanian. Um, I live at uh, 11 Thorpe Street, and um, there's something I'd like to speak about, about the Richter Park. Um, last year I attended my first performance, um, which I like Fiddler on the Roof, at Richter Park, when I realized, you know, I looked online and I saw how cheap it was. But um, I would like the city, the Common Council, and the Richter Park Authority, the Richter Park Authority to get the priorities straight. I mean, all I hear about is the golf course and everything in the papers and how much money has been, you know, allotted for the golf course. But I want the Richter Park Authority to look at the Richter House and, and the plays that are performed there. I mean, ever since we lost the Candlewood Playhouse and, and that, you know, and I started going to Richter Park, you know, um, for the first time, I've realized how much plays are important to me. I used to belong. I, I used to belong to the Ability Beyond Disability Theater troupe, and we put on plays and everything else. And what I'm saying is that acting and and cultural arts and these plays and these musicals mean a lot to me and a lot of people. And I and and I was looking online and and um, and I saw that you're having some plays this year. One of them I'd like to see. And what I want to see is if we could come to some sort of uh, um, thing where we could s re refurbish the Richter House and continue to perform plays over there. I don't want to see us lose anything. I mean, we already lost the Candlewood Playhouse. I don't want to see us to lose the Richter Playhouse or the plays and stuff. I like golfing too, but the plays mean more to me than golfing does. And I think we ought to do something about the plays and the performing arts and all that stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Mr. Gugger? Ken Gucker, 89th Page, Nairam Road. I want to speak on, obviously, item 20. Uh, I am against the sale of the land, as you, most of you well know. I think we need to look into, as uh, Ms. Basso put forward, more information on this. Uh, I was very happy to see what the council came up as a compromise during the meeting of the whole uh, as far as trying to preserve this particular piece of property, uh, deed restricting it. What I would like to see is more information looked into on this deed restriction aspect because there has been a lot of properties in the city of Danbury over the years that have had deed restrictions overturned. We have some very talented land use attorneys in this town that can find holes in just about everything that we have and somehow there's always a way of swapping it over to where it's a hardship etc to where we wind up on the short end. So I would like to see more uh, discussion on that and finally I have to say this from my heart. The meeting of the whole was probably the most unilateral, best council meeting I have ever attended. I actually watched bipartisanship happen in this chamber where everybody worked together on a positive 
stroke to try to come up with a great compromise. And I know I've come up here many times and I've done nothing but been very negative. I have nothing but good to say about what happened here. And I hope that that is something that continues on and you all deserve a very heartfelt thank you. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cocker. Um, Mary, Mary, come up forward. And then uh, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get to him. No, you do a fine job. All these people looking at me. Just make sure you give your name and address. Okay. Okay. I just came to speak. Okay. Um, as regards the item on Richter Park Authority, I wish, and I think my. I've always wanted that all of these authorities should be done away with. It is a fact that when they decide they want something accomplished without going to the public who is every bit a part of the decision making process, when it pertains to property given to the people of the city by generous people who only want to truly give up themselves to community they love, it is wrong in case anyone here tonight did not see the News Times opinion on March 10th. I can't, I'm not a good public speaker, people, so forgive me. You're going to have to pay for that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thumbs down to the closing of Richter House by Danbury's Richter Park Authority. It was done in a secretive, arbitrary fashion that does not befit an organization with public responsibilities. But the vote to close the house later rescinded has served one good purpose. It has focused attention on the authority's mishandling of its management responsibilities, which includes maintaining arts programs as requested by the Richter family. When their land was donated to the city, the Richter house needs repairs, but it should never have been all allowed to deteriorate. The authority maintains its golf course. Why hasn't the authority maintained the Richter House? And uh, by the way, I don't blame Mr. Mayor Bounton for letting it go to, down as it has. It's been all the mayors throughout. <laughs> it's all the mayors throughout the years since we took it. That's their fault. I, uh, please forgive me. I think I'm going to faint in a minute. So, oh God, I'm so nervous. I wish I had a drink before I came. <laughs> <laughs> this is a travesty to take away something the people of Danbury love behind closed doors. The Richters wanted to people to enjoy that lovely house. This reminds me of the tragedy of the closed door hearing on the property of Hearthstone in early 2006, when a member of the Common Council, Ted Casumptis, made a motion to the Common Council while a member of the authority to declare the property below Hearthstone surplus and let GRC, Gary Michaels, put up his nine mansions, property given to the people of Danbury by the Jennings family so that it would remain passive recreations for generations to come. Thank God it was found out before it was too late and withdrawn. Heaven help Richter Park. When Dodonna gets a hold of it, trees will die by the hundreds, and that beloved small house will be gone forever. The wonderful people like the Jennings family and the Richters, who want, wanted so much to give to the people of Danbury, what an insult to them. This unselfish act they wanted to see that something so important is left to the present and future generations and provide a stronger love for our city. Thank you for bearing with me, folks. I think I'll have a drink when I go home. <laughs> Mrs. Reynolds, just your address. Just your address for the record. Okay. Mrs. Mitchell, the floor is yours. And then Mr. Ginelli. Margaret Mitchell. When I'm in town, I'm at Two Park Place. Um, I'm a property owner, but not a resident. Uh, 
The Richter Park meeting lasted two and a half hours and it was sort of a painful meeting over there at Warner Hall at the university because you could see they've done a marvelous job with the golf course but the house had fallen into disrepair and that was really painful. But I actually came about something nobody else came about. It's number 13. It's the Emanuel Lutheran License Agreement, and I don't know if that's going to be on consent or, or you're going to discuss it a little bit on read and vote. Um, the grandmother in me just came out, and I wondered if the house is going to be ready for Head Start in the fall, and I wondered if this was going to hold up um, cleaning up the house in any way. I, I wondered if it had already been cleaned up and maybe it would, it would get the rugs dirty or the wall. I don't know how far you've gotten on the project, but I just thought, well, if it's going to be ready for the children in the fall, maybe it's not in our best interest to do this short term, even though I think it'd be a big boon to do something like this and have other people do filming in downtown Danbury. But I'm sure you're all going to ask all those questions because I got a yes to us, not on Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Mitchell. Uh, Mr. Ginelli. My name is Richard uh, Ginelli. I live at 18 Benson Drive in Danbury. I'm also a member of the Board of Education. I'm here tonight just to ask your indulgence and to vote favorably on item number 15, which is the Sun Lease Agreement. This is absolutely essential, crucial, uh, for the infrastructure of the school system. They're trying to replace a very antiquated uh, system that is not working properly. Uh, these new switches that we're asking for uh, will be an upgrade throughout the district. It would also enhance and work with the safety program we have for new cameras coming in. So uh, I just ask that you look favorable upon the, uh, the, the lease. Thank you very much. Mr. Tonelli. My name is Edward Ward. I live at 37 Worcester Heights Road in Danbury. <coughs> there is a very special place for Richter Park in my heart for a number of reasons. When Mrs. Richter gave her Westlake farm to the city of Danbury. It was done with the stipulation. I have to pay for this too. <laughs> and you're good, Mr. Ward. When Mrs. Richter gave her Westlake farm to the city of Danbury, it was done with the stipulation that that be developed into a recreational complex to include provision for the arts. She never said, make sure there are soccer fields or baseball diamonds or sandboxes for little children. There was one specific, and that was provide for the arts. An ordinance created Richter authority the charge to that authority was to develop that property, to maintain the buildings, and to maintain that property, to set policy, to establish budgets, and whatever else came as time went on. There was a time shortly after the Art Association was established, and by the way, that was established as a subcommittee to Richter Authority. So Richter Authority is the umbrella up here. Everything else is underneath it. Golf, Tennis, Art Association. So it is clearly Richter Authority's responsibility to take care of everything that is there. The golf course progressed. The Art Association progressed. People started to come. And at times, there wasn't enough parking. There was discussion about tearing up the front lawn of that Art Association building. It didn't take long, and a note came from Mrs. Richter, very brief and to the point. There was a check in the envelope as well. Mrs. Richter mentioned her beautiful home, that spectacular rock garden out in front, and Stanley's croquet court on the front lawn. 
needless to say, the cop, the cars went elsewhere. <coughs> Excuse me. It simply is the responsibility of Richter authorities to adhere to Mrs. Richter's wishes. Now we owe it to her for her memory, for her terrific gift, to her granddaughter, Ann Williams, who for many, many years <coughs> drove to Danbury from Westport to attend meetings, not only to look out for her grandmother's interest, but to look out for the golf course and the tennis. And Anne, again, was never even a resident in the city of Danbury, but looked very, very favorably on it. And in speaking to Anne a couple of weeks ago, she asked me to convey a message to Richter Authority, and that message was, do not tear that house down. Find a way to repair it. And I did that. And I will simply ask of all of you, and I know it's not the job of the Common Council to run Richter Park. It is autonomous. The mayor appoints the members to it. And then it is up to Richter Authority to go from there. But you are influential people in influential positions. And I would ask whatever you can do to make sure that that building is preserved, that you do that. We owe it to Mrs. Richter. We owe it to the many, many people that gave of their time and their talent, and in many cases, their money to get that art association going. We owe it to former Mayor Gino Arconti, who was very, very instrumental in bringing all of that about. And really, I think Gino never got the credit that he deserved, but we certainly owe it to him now and to his memory. So from my personal position, as I said earlier, there is a very special place in my heart for Richter Park. And I would ask simply that you all do whatever you can. Please, don't tear that building down. Put it back in its original condition. Thank you. Mr. Ward. Any other members of the public? We're in a few minutes left. Seeing none, then we'll move on with our regularly scheduled meeting. Um, there are several announcements that I just want to point out to the Common Council. Uh, first of all, we have a number of birthdays and wedding anniversaries. April 3rd is Jim Johnson's birthday. Councilman, happy birthday. Congratulations. <laughs> April 7th is Councilman McMahon's birthday. Congratulations. April 25th is Councilman Levy's birthday. And April 29th is Mr. and Mrs. Visconti's 30th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Most of the events are already listed um, for you on uh, the um, agenda that I provided for you. Uh, anybody wants to come and hang out on April 19th, we have Saturdays with the Mayor from 9 a.m. to noon in my office. Um, on, I do want to point out to the Council, May 3rd is Clean City Danbury Day. 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Our standard uh, layout will, in terms of where our dumpsters are going to go and the standard protocol will be in place. If the council uh, could make room on their time to volunteer that day to help direct traffic of our uh, residents and demand certain places, it would be greatly appreciated. We've had a strong turnout from the council that morning, and um, I know that we're guaranteed at least to bring you some donuts and coffee during the day. So we'd appreciate it if you have time to see what you can do to help us out there. The rest of the items are pretty self-explanatory uh, on the uh, agenda. Again, this is not by no means the only items that are happening uh, and events that are happening during the month. And so you can always check with Wendy DaCosta in my office if you have other concerns or want to know best time to attend. With that, Mr. President, minutes please. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion that we waive the reading of the minutes as all members have copies, and copies are on file in the city clerk's office. So Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded by Councilman Eggersha to waive the meetings of the minutes as all members have copies. Are there any deletions, changes, or corrections to the minutes as presented? Seeing none, then I'll try your minds and acceptance of the minutes. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify by saying nay. Ayes have it motion carries <coughs> unanimously. Uh, Mr. Majority Leader, the consent calendar, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Consent calendar, April 1st, 2008. Number three, receive the communication and confirm the appointment of John D. Priola as a member of the Stanley Lasker Richter Memorial Park Authority with a term to expire February 1, 2009. 
Number four, receive the communication and confirm, confirm the appointments of Mark Langley and Mary G. Saracino as members of the Transit District Board of Directors with terms to expire April 1, 2011. Number eight, receive the communication and approve the appointment of McGladry and Pullen LLP to perform the city audit in fiscal year ending June 30, 2008. Number nine, receive the communication and approve the transfer of $30,535 from the historic documents reserve account uh, 2.2129 to the town clerk's office equipment line item uh, 1160.5701 in the amount of $26,225 and to the town clerk's office supplies line 1160.5601 in the amount of $4,310 as requested. Number 14, receive the communication, approve the request from Wayne Tower Reliant Aircraft Services, Inc. and Reliant Properties to grant a temporary grading easement for the reconstruction of the airplane hangar at 1 Wibbling Road, Danbury, Connecticut. Number 16, receive the communication, adopt the resolution to authorize Mayor Mark D. Bowden or Scott Leroy to apply for and accept funding from the Mercer Memorial Foundation in the amount of, of $3,500. Number 17, receive the communication and adopt the resolution to authorize Mark, uh, Mayor Mark D. Bowden or Scott Leroy to apply for and accept funding from the Connecticut Coalition to end homelessness in the amount of $66,352. Number 18, receive the communication and adopt the resolution to authorize Mayor Mark D. Bowden or Fire Chief Jeff Harrell to apply for and accept funding from the Connecticut Fair Plan Anti-Arson Committee not to exceed $500. Number 20, receive the report and recommit a pre, uh, to previous ad hoc committee along with the report from the director of planning. Number 22, receive the report and approve the recommendations of the committee. Number 24, receive the report and approve the recommendations of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Seabury. It's your pleasure, Council. Councilwoman Teicholz. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to receive the consent calendar as presented. Motion made and seconded by Councilman Johnson. Any discussion regarding the consent calendar? Seeing none, now try your minds. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Madam Clerk, item one, please. Communication. Collective bargaining agreement between the City of Danbury and the Danbury Municipal Employees Association, Incorporated. Dear members of the Common Council, I am very pleased to present to the Council a proposed agreement between the City of Danbury and the Danbury Municipal Employees Association, Incorporated. Uh, the UPSEU Local 424 Unit 14. Representatives of the City and the Union engaged in good faith negotiations to present an agreement that would greatly benefit all. The proposed agreement is a two-year term beginning July 1st, 2007 and ending in June 30th, 2009. A copy of the agreement is on file in the city's clerk's office for your review. Uh, the agreement includes wage increase, increases of 3.5% and 3.5% annually for each year included in this contract. There has been no change to the health insurance or pension benefits. Language throughout the contract has been clarified, such as updates to the FMLA and the military leave sections in, uh, in order to comply with state and federal law. Additionally, greater flexibility has been gained in the use of sick time, allowing employees to utilize their sick time in one-hour increments as opposed to half-day increments. In the area of reclassifications, a side letter has been included that will allow a revision to the reclassification system. The parties have agreed to continue to meet and develop a more comprehensive and updated process to ensure appropriate compensation for a specific designated position. Your vote in favor of this agreement would produce positive effects for all involved. Sincerely, Mark D. Bowton, Mayor. It's a pleasure, Council. Councilwoman Diggs. Thank you, Your Honor. I want to make a motion to receive the communication and approve the contract as presented. Motion's been made and <coughs> seconded by Councilman Teicholz. Discussion regarding the contract for clerical staff. 
Seeing no discussion at this time, I'll try your minds on adoption of the contract. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those signify by saying nay. I just have a motion carries unanimously. And Madam Clerk, item two, please. Communication, promotion from the Danbury Police Department. Dear Common Council members, I am pleased to submit for your confirmation the promotion of Officer Vincent B. Daniello to the position of detective for the Danbury Police Department. Vincent was appointed in May 2000 and is the 2008 <coughs> Exchange Club Officer of the Year. Officer Daniello is a member of the Emergency Services Unit and SWAT team and is head of the department's honor guard. Vincent has many late letters of uh, acknowledgement for his efforts with Connecticut Special Olympic fundraisers. Vincent is a recipient of several letters of appreciation and commendation, including the Exceptional Police Service Award for seizing an illegal handgun and drugs during an assault complaint in August 2004 and a meritorious citation for his investigation during a robbery and homicide that occurred in December of 2004, resulting in two arrests. Thank you for your consideration of this appointment. Sincerely, Mark D. Bounton, Mayor. Much pleasure, Council. Councilman Arcani. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to receive the communication to confirm the promotion of Officer Vincent P. Daniello to the position of detective for the Danbury Police Department. Motion made and seconded by Councilman Trombetta. Any discussion about Mr. Daniello's appointment? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, oh, signify by saying nay. I just have it. Motion carries unanimously. Vincent, congratulations. Uh, we certainly, on behalf of the council, the city of Danbury, we look forward to you to continuing up the career ladder. I just want to say that this did an outstanding job in the interview process here, and I want to thank Jenny Alaska Warner, Chief Baker, and the whole team, uh, Deputy Chief Shanahan, that uh, helped interview him, and all the other candidates. There were really an exceptional pool of candidates, and you certainly <coughs> rose to the top. So congratulations and good luck to you as you continue your career ladder here in the city of Danbury. Madam Clerk. Uh, items three and four were consent. Item five, please. Communication, donation to the police department. Uh, two members of the council, Mayor and Mayor Mark D. Bounton from Ellen D. Baker, Chief of Police. Permission is requested to accept a donation of $505.28 raised by the families of Emanuel Lutheran School. This donation will be used to purchase a K-9 first aid kit and various other police canine equipment that will be of use to canine Britta and her handler, police officer Ant Antonelli. Uh, that's from Ellen D. Baker, Chief of Police. What's your pleasure, Council? Councilman Negershoff? Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to receive the communication, accept the generous donation, and uh, send an appropriate letter of thanks. Second. Made and seconded by Councilman Shianisi. Any discussion about the donation? Seeing none, then I'll try your minds. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those signify by saying nay. I have a motion carries unanimously. Madam Clerk, item six. Please. Communication, donation to the fire department. Dear Mayor Bounty, members of the council, I would, I would request the approval of the common council to accept a donation of lumber valued at $130 from Matt's Lumber. This lumber will be used to improve our fire school facility on Plum Plumtrees Road. If you require any additional information, please do not hesitate to contact me directly. Respectfully yours, Jeffrey R. Harold, Fire Chief. It's a pleasure, Council. Councilman Curran. Take a motion that we accept the generous donation from Matt's Lumber and send them appropriate letter of thanks. Motion made and seconded by Councilman McMahon. Any discussion about the donation of lumber? Seeing none, then I'll try your minds. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. I just have a motion carries unanimously. Uh, Madam Clerk, item seven, please. Communication, donation to the Department of Elderly Services. Dear Mayor Bowen and members of the council, the Department of Elderly Services has received the following donations for the performances by the cellmates, which is a senior center band and the senior center chorus from the following. The Village at Brookfield Common 25, Glen Hill 25. Additionally, HealthNet of Northeast Incorporated has donated a Wii interactive video game along with virtual bowling for the seniors to enjoy. 
This is valued at $250. We are grateful for this donation and ask the council to accept this donation as well as the $50, transferring the 50 into line item 5002-5318 postage. Thank you. Respectfully, Susan M. Tamanio, Director of Elderly Services. What's your pleasure, Council? Councilman Cavill. Thank you, Your Honor. This time I'd like to make a motion that we receive the communication and accept the donation from the Village of Brookville Town in Glenville, along with the donation of the relief and help that is working to continue to focus on the tanks. That motion made and seconded by Councilman Shianisi. Any discussion about the donations? Mr. Cavill. I just want to know, are we going to have a Wii uh, bowling league set up here in the city? You know? <laughs> Be able to compete with the seniors? <laughs> I'll, get my, I'll get my shirt out. I, I have no idea what they're talking about. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, any other discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, then I'll try your minds. All in favor of the donation, please signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. Ayes have a motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Madam Clerk, item 10, please. Communication, Headers Park Field Naming. Mm -hmm. Dear Mayor Bowen and Council Members, the Park and Rec mm -hmm. Department would like to propose the naming of softball field number one at Hedders Park in Danbury to the Dick Raymond Field. Mr. Raymond spoke to, spent the last 50 years organizing, coaching, administering, and promoting women's softball in our community. In addition, he was an officer for numerous softball organizations at the local and state level during that time. His work and dedication has earned him the respect of players and coaches um, alike. Naming the field for such an individual would truly show our appreciation and admiration for all of his achievements and for giving so much to the sport of softball in the Danbury area. Sincerely, Nicholas Caplanis, Director of, Educa of Recreation. Thank you, Madam Clerk. What's your pleasure, Council? Council Arcanti? Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to receive the communication, approve the proposal to name the softball field number one at Hedders Park in Danbury to the Dick Raymond Field. Instructions been made and seconded by Mr. Seabury. Discussion about the naming of the softball field. Mr. Levy. Your Honor, I uh, certainly don't uh, um, hold anything uh, uh, against uh, Mr. Raymond. I understand he has been outstanding in providing uh, women's softball in the city of Danbury. Um, I know that there are several people over the years, I go back to the uh, Mad Hatters and the uh, the local 10 Wildcats, and uh, uh, Danny Carroll, um, along with uh, Rich Lapine and um, Mr. Baker, uh, Paul Baker, and Aiden the Jamie. Uh, I think we need to develop a policy or a pr uh, process for naming these fields. And certainly, uh, um, I wouldn't have any objection after this goes to ad hoc committee, which I'm requesting that it um, take place after the naming of this field uh, so that Mr. Raymond uh, gets that, but that a process is devised. Motions have been made for an ad hoc committee. Ad hoc committee shall consist of the following. Councilman Cavo, Councilman Teicholtz, and Councilman Esposito. Madam Clerk, item 11, please. Communication. FAA leases. Dear Mayor and Council Members, What's your pleasure, Council? Councilman Knapp? I'd like to make a motion to refer this to Ad Hoc Committee uh, consisting of Corporation Council, Airport Administrator, and a report from the Planning Commission. Ad Hoc Committee shall consist of the following. Councilman Calandrino, Councilman Curran, and Councilman Visconti. Madam Clerk, item 12, please. Communication, Interlocal Sewer and Water Agreement. It's your pleasure, Council. Councilor McMahon. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to refer this to an ad hoc committee uh, with Corporation Council and the Director of Public Works. Ad hoc committee shall consist of the following. Councilman Calandrino, Councilman Knapp, and Councilman Soddy. Hey. Uh, I don't think we're going to get to Uh, let me amend that. Let me switch. Uh, uh, Councilman Sadi is going to be out of the country for a couple of weeks, so let me replace him with Councilman Visconti. Okay. <laughs> My country call. <laughs> we are proud of you. <laughs> no comment there. 
Uh, okay, item 13, please. Communication, Emanuel Lutheran License Agreement. Dear Mayor and Council, we will be submitting to you shortly a final proposed location agreement or license to permit Tipoli LLC, a movie production company, to occupy and use the main floor of the unoccupied former Emanuel Lutheran School on Forster Street as its local site for movie production. Pippa's use is, a, is for a temporary period of approximately three months through mid or late June. They have occupied the premise pursuant to the city's building use policy for a brief interim period during, during I mean, period due to time constraints pending your ratification of this location agreement. Briefly, the location agreement in essence is a temporary license that requires only your approval and does not require approval by the planning commission. It is, is not an interest in land, rather a contract for use only. The agreement contains clauses providing insurance and other protections allowing for safe and mutual beneficial use. PIPA will pay a monthly license fee to the city in the amount of $2,000 for each month of occupancy through the end of the term. Kindly review and consider the ratification of the location agreement in order that this beneficial and exciting use of this facility can go forward. Please do not hesitate to contact us in the event you have any questions regarding the agreement. Very truly yours, Laszlo L. Pinter, Deputy Corporation Counsel. Pleasure, Counsel. Councilman Cavill. Thank you, Your Honor. This time I'd like to make a motion that we receive the communication and authorize the office to the temporary license of the region. So, second. So, made and seconded by Councilman Rotello. Discussion. Mr. Sadi. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, through the chair to Corporation Counsel or uh, whoever can field this question from a public building standpoint, uh, Mr. Palanzo possibly. Will this, le this license in any way hold up or otherwise impact any of the renovations, improvements, or remediations that are going on at any of the, uh, at the site? I guess I can answer that. Mr. Idola can jump in when he wants. But basically the answer to that question is no. We're still in a, a value engineering process on the building. Um, and uh, uh, Mr. Idola, you want to just maybe, maybe you want to update? Uh, sure. Um, I know there was a, a request from the public before to just get a little update on what a project was uh, the design is complete. Actually, we're at the state SFU uh, today getting their approval for the first phase. Uh, first phase will be an actual building envelope uh, rehabilitation and includes the roof and the building envelope. So uh, we're hoping to go into contract around uh, July. So this should not have an impact at all. Um, and that's about it. Is that any further questions? No, not this time, Your Honor. Thank you. Further discussion by the council? Mr. Visconti. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I just think it's a, this is a, something that uh, we need to keep doing in the city. It's going to bring uh, money downtown, money to the restaurants, money to the hotels, and so on. And I think that uh, we made a wise decision in letting this uh, go through uh, so that other companies will be looking at us in the future. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Visconti, we have a role for you if you're interested in participating. <laughs> I understand that the... Never mind. <laughs> Your wife's calling me. <laughs> Any other discussion? Uh, Mr. Shinizi. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, the Corporation Council. With this license agreement that's before us, would this be like a boilerplate that we used for the future for other city building locations? In, in similar circumstances, we would. It's actually a fairly good agreement. It covers a lot of uh, facets of this kind of use. Uh, it is a license agreement. It's a little broader than the typical license agreements. It could be either verbal or very short. This one attempts to properly cover the use of this sizable facility. Mr. Spencer, further discussion by the council. Seeing none, then I'll try your minds. All in favor of the license agreement, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, signify by saying nay. I used to have a motion carries unanimously. Appreciate the council's cooperation on that initiative, and we'll keep you posted, let you know how it's working. Item 14 was consent. Madam Clerk, item. 15. Resolution, Sun Trust Lease Agreement. <clears throat> to Honorable Mark Fountain, City of Danbury Common Council, please find attached for your review 
the lease agreement package from Sun Trust Equipment Finance and Leasing Corporation and CW, uh, CBW, Government Incorporated for the leasing and financing of three com corporation technology components. It is the Board of Education slash Danbury Public Schools intention to execute a four-year lease agreement for technology components of value $499,000. Attached you will find supporting documentation including the sales quotation, lease terms, and amortization schedule. The total amount to be financed is $499,500, which includes a $500 document preparation fee. Funding for this lease will come from the Board of Education operating budget with the first repayment deferred to fiscal year 2008-2009. On March 12, 2008, the Board of Education voted unanimously to approve the lease arrangement and to forward a request to the City of Danbury Common Council asking it to approve the lease agreement at the next meeting date. I respectfully ask that this request be placed on the Common Council April 1, 2008 agenda for action. Please review this package and contact Mr. Elio Longo, Jr., the, di the district's finance director, with any concerns, required cha changes, or recommendations that you may have. Mr. Longo can be reached by calling his office. Regards, Sal Pascarella, uh, Superintendent of Schools. Pleasure, Council. Councilman Cavill. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion that we receive the communication and adopt the resolution presented to us tonight that authorizes the Board of Education through the Office of the Danbury Public School Superintendent to enter into and negotiate and execute an equipment lease along the guidelines of what we were presented here tonight in our materials. Second. Made and seconded by Mr. Visconti. Discussion. Mr. Levy. Your Honor, I'd like to refer this to an ad hoc committee um, along with uh, uh, the, uh, I don't know whether this goes to the Planning Commission or not, uh, through the Chair of the Corporation Council. Long way to go for the word no. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we certainly can do that, Mr. Levy. I will tell you that we are under a, a time constraint here. We risk losing our interest rate and we could cause a significant uh, uh, amount of further payment due, I think it goes from 3.06 to 3.11 if we miss our rate lock. So if there are questions you want to answer tonight, Mr. Longo and Dr. Pasquarella are here to answer those. If you insist, we can send, we can send it to uh, ad hoc too, but just if, if there's any possible way. You I was not, uh, the, um, the copy of the boilerplate contract that was referenced in here, I was not, uh, I was not given any information on that. And I also have some concerns because of uh, the deficit in the Board of Education's budget um, that was in the newspaper for $700,000 uh, along with other monies that um, were expended as to where these funds were coming from and whether uh, uh, this, they were certified funds available. And I think all of this could be flushed out in the ad hoc committee. I realize these are typically in a uh, in a rush situation, but uh, I think sometimes we just have to take our time and, take, and review them carefully. Well, uh, we certainly can do that. It's unfortunate because we won't be able to get this till May. We'll, we will miss the rate lock on the interest. Um, it's also unfortunate uh, because we did have certainly a lot of time. Uh, this agenda was delivered on Friday and folks could have called Dr. Mr. Longo and Dr. Pasquarella and got more information, but um, Obviously, the children will have to uh, suffer on this one. So the ad hoc committee shall consist of the following. Councilman Cavo, uh, Councilman Teicholz, and Councilman Esposito. Sorry, folks. Madam Clerk, uh, 16, 16 through 18 were consent. Item 19. <coughs> report, annual report of the Danbury Housing Partnership. Mr. Cavo? Your Honor, at this time I'd like to make a motion that we waive the reading of the report as all members have copies and copies are on file in the city clerk's office. Second. Motion made and seconded by Mrs. Teicholz uh, to waive the reading report. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition to waiving the reading report? Seeing none. Uh, what's your pleasure, Council? Mr. Johnson? 
Thank you, Your Honor. I move to receive this communication and accept the annual report of the Danbury Housing Partnership as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded uh, by Councilman Eggersuth. Any discussion about the annual report? Seeing none, then I'll try your minds. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, signify by saying nay. I just have a motion carries unanimously. Madam Clerk, item 21, please. Item 20 was, item 20 was on consent. You know I understand, right? That yeah, was not consent. Just a, yeah, we, yeah. What's on there? Yeah, it's on consent. Item 21, please. Uh, report and ordinance, government entities. Chicago? I'd like to make a motion that we waive the reading of this report as all members have copies, and copies are on file in the city clerk's office. Second. This has been made and seconded by Mr. Rotella to waive the reading of the report. Mr. Cobble made the motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify by saying nay. I just have a motion carries unanimously. Uh, with the pleasure, Council, and item 21. Uh, Mrs. Stanley. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to re receive the report and adopt the committee's recommendations. This has been made. Second. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Discussion under item 21. Mr. Shane Easy. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess it's more of a general uh, comment, more or less, given the amount of public uh, comment regarding the Richter authority. Um, but the question here, I guess, remains is that it boils down to the lack of communications from our authorities to this council. And I know that it's, it's in the ordinance that we should be getting. Turn up your mic. Go ahead, Mr. Cheney. Please proceed. Okay. Well, I have no objections to the to the request here this evening, but I do have a, a suggestion. Again, like I was saying, that the lack of communications from our authorities to this council needs to be vastly improved. And one of the things I would like to see is periodic reports from our authorities to this council to keep us abreast of what's actually going on within these authorities so it doesn't come down to a situation where we have to act harshly in some cases. So, and, and more or less, it's not really gonna be a recommendation but more of a request to our authorities that they at least give us some type of periodic reports, whether it be quarterly or, or monthly, that we at least are aware of what's going on within their within their approval. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Shinisi. Any other discussion? Seeing none, then I'll try your minds. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. I just have a motion carries unanimously. Uh, Madam Clerk, I'm 23, please. Ad hoc report and ordinance, sex offender ordinance. Mr. Cabo? Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion that we waive the reading of these minutes as all members have copies and copies are on file in the city clerk's office. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion about waiving the reading of the report? Uh, I thought that was Mr. Okay, that was Mr. Perkins. Um, any discussion about waiving the reading of the report? Seeing none, then I'll try your minds. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. I have a motion carries unanimously. Um, what's your pleasure, Council? I am 23, Mrs. Teichelt. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to receive the report and amend the ordinance as reflected in the report court, including the adjustment of the maximum penalty of $250 and referred to a public hearing without objection. Second. The request. <laughs> <laughs> Never give Mrs. Stanley the microphone. <laughs> but again, but um, seeing uh, that there, seeing that there is there, there's no objection, then it is so ordered that we uh, move to a public hearing. Um, we need a motion to do that. Mrs. Teichels. Item 24 was consent. Uh, Mr. President, Department reports, please. 
Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to waive the reading of the minutes of the department, or waive the departmental reports, as all members have copies, and copies have, or copies are on file in the city clerk's office. Second. Motion made and seconded by Mr. Negeshet. Any discussion about department reports? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of accepting the reports, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. Mr. Cabo. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to add an item number 26 to the agenda, a resolution of VA grant for homeless shelter. Motion's been made to add item 26 to the agenda, seconded by Mr. Seabury. All those in favor of adding this to the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, signify by saying nay. I just have a motion carries unanimously. Madam Clerk, uh, item 26, please. Your, Honor, your Honorable Mark Bounton to the Camera Council from David St. Clair, Director of Finance. Attached for your review is a resolution that will allow the City of Danbury Health, Housing and Welfare Department to apply for and accept funding from the Veterans Affairs Administration for the City of Danbury Homeless Shelter Operations. If the per diem grant is awarded, the funding will be used to reserve five beds in the sh homeless shelter for Danbury veterans. The Common Council is resp respectfully requested to consider this resolution at the next Common Council meeting. Uh, with your pleasure, Council. Councilman Cavill. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion that we receive the communication and approve, adopt the resolution authorizing Mayor Mark D. Bouton to apply for, and a, if the grant is approved, to accept the said funds and ex execute any agreements and documents necessary to effectuate its purpose. That's been made and seconded by Mr. Seabury. Is there any discussion? Uh, Mr. Shinis. Thank you. Since we got this uh, this evening, can to the, to the Your Honor, can you yeah. just give us an overview sure. of the grant? This is the um, first phase. Uh, yesterday, we rolled out a new initiative here in the city of Danbury, tied to the 10-year plan to end homelessness. This is called Housing for Heroes, uh, and the goal here uh, is to marshal our resources to provide uh, ultimately what will be 30 units of housing for uh, veterans, uh, really from all wars that are struggling with housing issues and. Uh, finding permanent permanent housing. Um, this is the phase one of this. We'll be adding, or actually we'll be incorporating five beds of our shelter that will be used specifically for veterans. Part of this will include the triaging that we do through the Dream Homes uh, Community Center and determining the needs and the strengths and the challenges that those individuals face. Uh, then we'll move them towards the next stage, which will be uh, transitional housing with supportive wraparound services that will go with them. And then finally, we'll move them to hopefully home ownership opportunities somewhere in the community. Uh, so this grant sort of kicks off uh, that first part of uh, being able to help those that have helped all of us so much. Uh, we have identified approximately 40 individuals who are veterans within the community that are homeless at this time or struggling with housing issues. Obviously, we like to have 40 beds, but not all of those individuals are necessarily on the streets either. But those are individuals that need access to housing. And so the next step will be that we marshal our resources with the Danbury Housing Authority, the federal government, the city, uh, as well as the Nonprofit Housing Development Corporation uh, to purchase uh, a facility which will be uh, able to house veterans as that transitional stage where they'll get their services and then we'll hopefully move them into permanent housing. So that's uh, why this is in front of you tonight. The application grant deadline, I believe, is April 3rd or April, April 7th, 8th. Okay, so we like, we wanted to get that done before the next meeting. Mr. Shinesi. In the follow-up to the honor, would this require a match from the city? There's no local match from the city. And we've had very strong uh, signals from the VA that they will be supporting this grant. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none then, I'll try your minds. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, signify by saying nay. I just have a motion carries unanimously. Before we adjourn, I'm going to extend to all committees and remind uh, <coughs> folks that there is a special common council meeting Monday night where we'll have the budget meeting, a signed committee, begin our deliberations over the 08-09 spending year. With that, I'll entertain it. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, before we adjourn, would it be possible to revisit item 15 for a moment with a question? Is that out of line? Uh, except by unanimous consent, I believe item 15 was the Sunlease. Was that the lease agreement? It's been referred to an ad hoc. Unfortunately, 
Uh, we can't do that. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none then, I'll try to try mine in adjournment. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? I'm <laughs> Okay, who did that? Mr. Cianese, seconded by Mrs. Diggs. All in favor of adjournment, please sig signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. Aye, Sarah, motion carries hands.